Hi, so we're gonna take a look at rehabbing a VEX 393 motor. Okay, the symptom here is that basically the, uh, the uh, wires have fallen off from use. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the top uh, with Phillips head screwdriver. We're gonna try to leave the screws in the top portion of it. Okay, uh, this could be done with an electric screwdriver too. Um, wasn't sure if those were gonna be available, so using a manual screwdriver. Okay, so we're gonna to try to, uh, to leave the screws in the top, so I'm kind of forcing it up with my uh, finger and thumb there, uh, and then kind of pushing it against the screws so I know that when the, screw, when the screws come loose from the housing. Okay, so we have our top off. We're gonna leave the screws inside the top there and put them down. Then we're gonna go ahead and do these next two screws. So the screws here are the motor mount screws. We're also gonna remove this uh, rubber piece here uh, and kind of bend the wire up at the same time. The rubber piece does have to come off there. Okay, also make sure that your uh, soldering iron is as high as it will go. Uh, these would go to, well, maybe not as high as it will go. These go to 550, so if you're using this model, 550. Okay, so now the motor mount screws are gonna come off. Um, these are very small screws, so do your best not to lose them, obviously. Uh, okay. <clears throat> All right, so now those are loose, and what we're going to do is we're going to turn the whole thing around. Now, these, this, these gears will fall right out, so what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to brace everything with a finger here, turn the whole thing upside down, and we're going to take off the bottom <clears throat> cover. All right, so those screws come out. And I'm doing my best to sh have everything on video here, uh, <laughs> which is kind of tough. All right. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up here. And again, I'm gonna to try to, uh, I'm going to try to keep the screws in the bottom cover here uh, by kind of bringing it up as I go. And then finally, when the screws all release, the cover will just come off. Okay, so there's our cover and it's going right back on here. I'm careful not to burn myself on the soldering iron. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the motor. And as I'm removing the motor, sometimes the screws will just kind of pop out of the top that didn't happen this time, which is great. And all I'm gonna do now is basically just keep everything kind of intact by just laying it right there on its side. So, so there we have the, the, top, the top cover, the bottom cover, and the housing, all with all the screws in place there. All right, now our strategy here is to basically melt the solder. So on the bottom of the motor is a control board. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna replace the entire wire here. So. Uh, and we're gonna remove it, remove the wires by, uh, by actually melting the solder on the PCB. To do that, we're just gonna do it one at a time. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm bracing the bottom of the motor with the, my uh, finger here. I'm grasping the black wire with my other finger. Notice we're remembering that the black wire goes on the outside. And then we're just gonna, easy as that, just hit the solder with the, um, with, uh, with the um, soldering iron and it came right out. Now, remember that uh, you should treat all solder. Now, I don't know if this is lead-free solder, but you should treat all solder as if it has lead in it, which means that once you're done working with it, you should immediately wash your hands and you should not be eating or touching food while you're doing this. So just assume that while you're working with any pre-existing solder that, uh, that you are being exposed to lead. Now, the solder that we're using in the classroom, of course, is lead-free solder, uh, which you should be using too, even though it is more difficult to work with. All right, so we have our, we have our uh, wires removed here. Now we're gonna take a good length. We have a, our replacement wire. A good rule of thumb here is just to go the length of the screwdriver. It's kind of hard to gauge. <clears throat> I guess we could use a ruler. Um, but we need about this much wire here, so. All right, uh, and it's not really, uh, you know, it's not necessary to get too accurate with it. It's about six inches, I'd say. Okay, so we have our wire here, and all we're gonna do is we're just gonna strip the ends of it. We're not gonna go too far with it. Um, 
So we're just gonna go ahead and strip the ends. Um, I believe this wire we're using, uh, I wanna say is a 24 gauge. Um, okay, so once the ends are stripped, we're gonna, um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, twist the wire up. Uh, and this will make it easier for us to get it back through those, uh, those holes in the PCB. So at this point, what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna remelt, if we can see here at the bottom of the PCB, we can see the solder is still there. If we look at the bottom, we can see the two holes there, right here, right at the ends there. We're gonna remember the black one on the outside. And all we're gonna do now is we're basically gonna remelt that solder and we're gonna push the wire back up through the PCB. Now to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the, I'm just gonna rest it on the board. Um, the main thing that we're watching out for here is that uh, what we don't want to have happen is we don't want these two solder pieces to touch. So this black and white so or black and red wires are carrying electricity. If these two solder pieces touch, that's called a solder bridge and it will create a short. Basically the electricity will just flow back through the other wire and will never go into the motor. Um, and it will result in the motor not functioning. Okay, so here we are trying to pass the wire back through. Uh, it should be fairly straightforward. Okay, I'm gonna get it in there, kind of hold it steady with one finger. This is where a friend could help, by the way. Uh, if you have a, a person sitting next to you that maybe could help out with this, that would be great. Uh, we wanna try to put the wire all the way through, all the way up to our housing. Now this, in this case, uh, my wire uh, went partially through uh, and didn't hold very well, so so we're going to be redoing it um, and retwisting it. It's really important to get kind of a tight twist. We could tin this wire as well to make it really just a single piece of metal. Um, I think that's kind of overkill at this point, but we might, if you have a hard time, you can. Okay, so we're going to re-solder it and just get it right back through here. All right, so we have our first wire in. And we're going to go ahead and retwist our second wire. I always have more trouble on the second wire for some reason. But. All right, so here comes our second wire. And we're going to remelt the solder. And, all right, and there we go. Okay, now uh, in this case, um, sometimes the solder will be enough. Um, so in this case, we have our wires back through at this point. I'm gonna retwist them so they're, so they're nice and neat. We probably could have just tinned them. And what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna re-solder those wires. And we're gonna to try to create a kind of a Hershey's kiss there at the top. Now, uh, the worst thing that can happen here is a solder bridge. Uh, so we're gonna avoid that if, uh, if we can. Okay, so we're gonna get the wire nice and hot. Uh, if we need to, we're gonna go ahead and clean off our, uh, our soldering iron. These soldering irons have been used to death by students. So, uh, so what we wanna see here is you wanna see a shiny tip, okay? So whoop. if we clean off our soldering iron, basically, you wanna see kind of a shiny tip there on it. So uh, we can also tin that um, and get it, uh, you know, cover it with a little bit of solder there um, and then kind of wipe that off as well. Uh, and that will help us to conduct electricity. If you see shininess on the end of your, your soldering iron, that's saying it's gonna be a little bit better at conducting electricity, so. Okay, and we're gonna push a little bit of solder in there. Okay. And the main thing that we want to check here, it's just as easy as that. The main thing that we want to check here, if we look at the side, is we have a nice Hershey's Kiss and we don't have any solder bridge. So we can see a gap in between there, a visible gap, uh, which I see. We're also going to double check just by pulling gently on the wires. Now that, that is not a perfect job. You see we have some wire here left over at the bottom, but it's okay. Uh, and then the next thing we're going to do is just clip off just the ends of those with a clipper, just to make it nice and neat at the top. And there we have it. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is just uh, reassemble our, our, uh, our motor. So we're gonna start by threading the wire back up through uh, the, the um, hole that it came from. Uh, now this new wire, uh, the wire that we're using is not going to fit. Uh, it's not going to fit uh, back into the rubber housing. That was, whoops, I'm not gonna try to avoid that, what I just did. <laughs> 
So when you're putting this back in, the gear has to fit up in there. We want the wire to be kind of, um, you know, not too loose inside. And it's gonna fit just about like that. Um, if if uh, gear does fall out on you, um, the best thing to do here would have been if I, uh, if I would have, um, oops. The best thing for me to have done here would have been to take a picture of both sides of this. I didn't do that because I've done this quite a bit. Um, but taking a picture first would guarantee that you remember every, you know, everywhere that everything is supposed to be. <laughs> so uh, the first screws we're going to put back in are the motor mount screws. So, uh, so now that we have this in, we're holding everything together with our finger on the other side. And we're just going to go ahead and screw in those motor mount screws. Uh, nice and tight. Uh, but not too tight you know uh, these tiny screws uh, if you you're not going to crank down on it they're kind of finger tight there um, these screws are not going to jiggle back out on us um, so they're fine okay then we're going to go ahead and just do the top since we're already in position we're going to notice that we have this notch here that that's where the wire is going to exit the motor Okay, and we're just getting these back on there. And we're gonna make sure all these screws are nice and tight. Sometimes it's easier to get them started and then go back around and uh, tighten them up. Okay, and then we're gonna just twist this over here. And we'll put these back on. Okay, and there we have it. So that is replacing the wire of the 393 motor. Um, and then uh, we'll have a second video where we attach the, uh, the connector there. All right, best of luck.